Hello and welcome to Psyched, the show where we explore psychedelics through social, economic, and political perspectives. Dion. Uh, Magic Medicine Journey, How Mind Medicine Australia is Building an Ecosystem for Psychedelic Assistive Therapies in Australia. Tanya De Jong uh, is a, a trailblazing Australian soprano, global speaker, award-winning social entrepreneur, creative innovation catalyst, and spiritual journey woman. Tanya is one of Australia's most successful female entrepreneurs and innovators, developing five businesses and three charities over the past three decades, including Creative Universe, Creativity Australia, and with One Voice program, Creative Innovation Global, Mind Medicine Australia, Dimension 5, MTA Entertainment and Events, Potpourri, and The Song Room. She was appointed a member of the Order of Australia and named one of the 100 Women of Influence and the 100 Australian Most Influential Entrepreneurs. Tanya has released 11 albums and her TED talk, How Singing Together Changes the Brain, has sparked international interest. Tanya, we're extremely excited to have you and welcome to Psyched. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm hoping that people can see me as well. Hello. Yep, we can hear and see you. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm in Sydney today. Sydney, Sydney, Australia. Welcome. It's late at night here and um, it's a pleasure to be involved in this wonderful project with Psyched 2020. And I'm of course from Mind Medicine Australia. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about my magic medicine journey and also a little bit about Mind Medicine Australia and just where the world is at today that made us start this project. But first, um, I wanted to start off with um, a little bit about my background. So actually, I'm a singer. And of course, song is one of those wonderful things. There was a time when we all used to sing. We sat around campfires at church, at school. We sang our stories and our dreams. We sang alone and we sang together. But nowadays, most of us don't sing together anymore and certainly in this COVID world we don't sing together much at all and probably a lot of us don't feel like singing because it's been a really hard time but singing is is very important for our minds and our brains so I actually wanted to start off with something a little bit special today and this is actually a a video it's a psychedelic video which I'm singing along to so um, I want to uh, play that for you now this is um, this video, which should be coming on now shortly. Are you playing that along? Where is it then? Oh, good. <laughs>
So that was a beautiful video, which was somewhat stunted in its playing because of the wonders of technology. So Zoom's working very well though. So the wonderful thing about singing, of course, is that singing together is a wonderful miracle drug. Singing together makes us smarter, healthier, happier, and more creative. It improves our memory, language, and concentration. When we sing with others, our hearts even start to beat together. And one of the really important things about singing is it increases our neuroplasticity and it helps connect us to the right side of our brain. And the right side of our brain is our intuitive, imaginative center. It is where our imagination comes from. The right side of our brain connects us to one another and all that is. And the right side of the brain is not likely to be automated. On the other hand, the left side of the brain is all about being logical and analytical and rational. It separates us from others. And it's suggested that we spend about 85% of our time in the left side of our brains being overwhelmed by too many facts and figures, which is literally draining our batteries. The left side of our brain is also much more likely to be automated. And of course, all of this time spent in the left side of our brain, having our batteries drained, means that we're living in a world where we feel more lonely and isolated and depressed and disconnected than ever before. All this talking to boxes and screens, we talk more to boxes and screens than we do to one another. So it becomes fundamentally important to nurture the attributes of human beings that set us apart from machines. Love, compassion, creativity, courage, determination, empathy, and so on. Because it's said that up to 60% of current middle-class jobs may disappear due to robots and other new technologies. So we're going to need all that creativity and innovation in a world that is being run by robots. Tom Attlee recently said, I've come to believe that things are getting better and better, worse and worse, faster and faster simultaneously, and that could never be more true than today. And we're gonna need this new collective consciousness. We're going to have to raise our collective consciousness and our collective intelligence to, to really cope with this changing, accelerated, uncertain world. We're going to need six new right brain sensors to master our future, design, story, symphony, empathy, play, and meaning. And we're moving from this old linear thinking, this industrial age thinking, which is very command and control, siloed, top-down, left-brained, analytical, separate, linear, to this new world of creative disruption, this connected world of the right brain, where we can be more nurturing, empowering, compassionate, where we can be prepared to fail fast and try again, where we can share abundance instead of keeping all the assets for ourselves. And it's going to be ever more important to share abundance because we're on the brink of a major change in our civilization where the link between meaning and employment is about to be severed. And all of us should ask, what's our role going to be going forwards? How are we going to find meaning? What's going to matter? And I believe that the most important thing is to become an active, caring, sharing citizen who is creative and expresses entrepreneurship so that we can be the creators and makers of jobs and not rely on others for our future well-being and also so that we can actually use our creativity and innovation to solve the wicked problems that are coming ever more quickly towards us. Yuval Noah Harari who wrote Sapiens Homo Deus and 21 Lessons for the 21st Century says the most important thing for the future is to invest in emotional intelligence and mental balance to build a more flexible personality because the hardest challenges will be psychological. And of course, psychedelics are the most wonderful way to build a more flexible personality, to get out of our rigid, repeated thought patterns and structures. 
our default mode that we keep defaulting to. We need to bypass that regularly if we're going to manage to keep up with this rapidly changing world. And it's very important in this world to become more creative. A lot of people who I speak to, and I speak to thousands and sometimes tens of thousands of people per year at, at keynotes and at conferences and events, and a lot of people, leaders say to me, but I'm not creative. How can I get more creative? Well, Steve Jobs famously said that the best way to get creative is to simply to connect the dots, to connect the dots in new and different ways. And the best way to do that, I like to think, is to have what I call positive human collisions. That is, we spend most of our time talking to and hanging out with people who are just like us, who think like us, dress like us, have similar backgrounds and educations. But our greatest gains as human beings are when we connect with people who are really different from us on a regular basis, who challenge us and who disagree with us. And boy, can that feel uncomfortable. But that's where true creative abrasion can occur and where true innovation and creativity can spark. And it's incredibly important for us to connect with diverse and different people on a regular basis as one. We are all one after all, and anyone who's familiar with psychedelics will know that this sense of oneness is at the heart of all humanity. And it's only when we turn and other people that we have a lot of problems in our lives and in our community and society. So it's particularly important to me because um, my grandparents and parents were Holocaust survivors. But in this photo, you can see my grandfather on the far left and my grandmother is the lady in white, furthest right with a, with a white shawl on. Carl and Slava Dudik or Slava Horowitz as my grandmother was before she married my grandfather and they came to Vienna to study as um, artist emigres with the great sculptor Anton Hanak, who was a contemporary of Egon Schiller and Gustav Klimt. And as young students, they met and fell in love. And um, they used to go on their dates to the art galleries and exhibitions. And one particularly rainy Sunday, my grandmother was really talking about the fact that she was always losing her big umbrella in the cloakrooms of the art galleries and muse museums. And wouldn't it be a wonderful thing to try to create a little umbrella that would fit in a handbag? And so my grandmother actually set about trying and failing with her idea. I like to think of fail as first attempt in learning. Anyway, she tried and failed. She said, you know, today I try this with my invention. And she went round all the lampshade shops in Vienna that time you can imagine Vienna, the richness of the culture, the art, the history in that place, the community was all very, very convivial. She went round trying and failing, keeping a secret though with her idea, her wonderful little invention. Today I tried this, it didn't work, but tomorrow I'm going to try this. And she never gave up until in September 1929, she invented the very first foldable umbrella, which of course was named the flirt, which I think is a very appropriate name for a little umbrella. The very first foldable umbrella still manufactured in Vienna in that factory. But in 1939, the Nazis came into Vienna and by the sheer miracle of their creativity, my grandfather was able to bribe a border guard for a passage out to Switzerland for my grandmother, my mother who was only three months old at the time and, and himself and they got out literally three days before the Nazis came and took away all the rest of our family who were never to be seen again. An absolute tragedy. The umbrella um, continued to be manufactured, but my grandmother who had been getting royalties from the umbrella invention was asked to sell her patent and not knowing where they were going to go with a little baby in tow, they had no choice but to sell the patent and she was never to see another cent from her wonderful invention, though she's still absolutely the inventor of the foldable umbrella, which you can see on the patent offices. And of course, next time that you see an umbrella in your briefcase or anywhere, please think of Slava Horowitz, the inventor of the very first foldable umbrella. 
And that brings me to these questions that are going to be important for us all to be asking. What could exist or be happening that is not right now? Well, that would certainly be, you know, psychedelic medicines. Can someone overseas do it cheaper? Important questions. Can an AI do it more quickly? How do we become lifelong learners and improve our agility, creativity, resilience, generosity, and empathy? Certainly uh, psychedelics will help with that. And I, am I offering something that satisfies the creative, non-material, experiential, meaningful desires of an abundant age? And that question my grandmother asked, imagine if. Muhammad Ali famously said, service to others is the rent you pay for your room here on this earth. And so it was that um, my husband and I were lucky enough to come across psychedelics through Tim Ferriss's blog and then Michael Pollan's article called The Trip Treatment in the New Yorker. And I had never um, had any drugs in my life. I don't even drink alcohol. And... Um, <laughs> I'm a pretty boring person. I don't even drink coffee for that matter. And I came across this article and it talked about actually a, a Holocaust survivor and how he'd got through his multi-generational trauma through psilocybin. And I said to my husband, you know, we really should try these medicines. We tried to get into some trials with Robin Carhart Harris and some others. We couldn't get in because we're fundamentally healthy patients. We don't have a mental illness diagnosis per se, though we're all on the continuum. And uh, so what happened was, I'm not quite sure what's on this screen, but um, Elan, what is on that screen? And um, we're about to show you this video. And so um, we went about trying these medicines uh, in a medically controlled environment in Holland. Of course, these medicines shut us out of the stratosphere and was so profound uh, for us that my husband and I, who set up four charities previously, very successfully decided to start another charity, which is Mind Medicine Australia. We've met with all the psychiatrists and uh, you know researchers in this space globally. And now we're building an ecosystem for Australia. And before we do that, we're gonna show you just this quick video to give you a sense of Mind Medicine Australia. So this is the video now. A video. Is that coming up? Did you know that over 45% That just stopped. of Australians will experience mental illness in their lifetime. That's nearly half of us. I can't sleep. I don't. Everything feels flat and grey. I feel ashamed. Mental ill health devastates lives and families and costs Australians around $60 billion a year. Research and treatment expenses continue. To rise, yet rates of mental illness indicate that we're losing the battle. New approaches are urgently needed to address this immense suffering and cost. Psychedelic assisted psychotherapy is currently being trialled worldwide and has demonstrated remarkable promise in treating depression, anxiety, addiction, and post traumatic stress disorder, with new trials underway for treatment of dementia and anorexia. The treatment combines a short program of psychotherapy with just a few medicinal doses of psilocybin or MDMA. In the 1950s and 60s, psychedelic treatments had a major impact in psychiatry, and many considered it the next big thing in mental health treatment. 
but for political reasons, the Nixon administration criminalised the use of psychedelics and effectively stopped all research. That research has finally begun again. With proper clinical support, psychedelic treatments are safe and frequently lead to remission after only a short program and even where current treatments have failed. Here at Mind Medicine Australia, we believe everyone should have access to the best treatments for mental illness. Subject to forthcoming clinical trial results, we will seek to establish best practice in regulated psychedelic assisted treatment. Mind Medicine Australia is wholly focused on the clinical application of psychedelic medicines. We're preparing for change by developing therapist training, ethical guidelines, a centre of excellence in psychedelic medicine, educational material and events, and supporting clinical research. We're a small organisation doing big things, and we need your support. Please share this video and visit our website to support us and get involved. So that is our um, interesting video. We'd love you to share that widely. And this is the situation in Australia that we have one in eight Australians and one in four older Australians on antidepressants, really alarming levels of mental illness as we do in many parts of the world. Next slide. Alan. And the costs, of course, are massive. Our goal is to make sure that these medicines become an integrated part of the medical system. We've put together a great board, um, ambassadors. You can see there, of course, the leading researchers in the world, a wonderful advisory panel of psychiatrists, psychologists, religious leaders, and others. And um, We've just started Australia's first clinical trial at St Vincent's Hospital in Melbourne for end of life patients experiencing anxiety and depression. That's using psilocybin. And our focus is on key, four key strategic areas, awareness and knowledge building. So running education and events, a major international medical summit in November in 2020, which we invite you all to attend, which is featuring a number of the leading researchers in the world. We're also looking at relevant new research. We've started state and regional chapters of Mind Medicine Australia to scale and build awareness around Australia and New Zealand and Asia. A therapist professional development program. So the first certificate in psychedelic therapies in this region to commence in January, 2021 and has just opened for registration. We're also looking at an Asia Pacific center of excellence and the whole legal and ethical frameworks the manufacturing of the medicines and so on. This is who's going to be speaking at our summit, COVID willing. This is about the certificate in psychedelic assisted therapies. And I love this quote of Tim Ferriss who talks about, if you wanna bend the arc of history, this is one of the best opportunities you'll ever have. Really encourage people to support us and all the organizations in this space through donating, fundraising, volunteering, attending events, talking to your doctors, your members of parliament, and just really, really getting the word out at a particularly focusing on the science behind these medicines. So just to finish up with five game changes, focus on positive human collisions, fail equals first attempt in learning. Getting into our right brain headspace as often as possible. The medicines certainly help with that. Asking questions, what if, why not? Becoming more curious every day. And don't be silenced, let your true voice be heard. I wish for a world where I can is more important than IQ. And where you are measured by what you give, not by what you get. And Rabbi Hillel, who said, if I am not for myself, who will be for me, but when I'm only for myself, what am I, and if not now, when? This is our link, and I believe that there's time for a couple of questions. So we'll go back to the main frame slide. I'll learn if we can stop the screen share now. 
Hey, Tanya, thank no. you so much. Really appreciate the talk. Um, so I have one question and then a little activity. Um, so first question, I'd love to just hear about, uh, you know, what does the uh, ecosystem in Australia look like in terms of receptivity to these types of, um, uh, you know, therapies, these types of compounds? Uh, you know, we understand a little bit of how people are talking about it in the States, but could you give us a little bit of a lay of the land of Australia? Yeah, I mean, we, um we've been pleasantly surprised by um, how much openness there is to the medicines and i think that that's also largely driven by the fact that we have such a huge mental health epidemic and people are desperate for solutions to deal with the increasing mental illness in our country and the current existing treatments like antidepressants and psychotherapy are only having you know, maximum of 30% remissions. So there's a norm, millions of people, literally millions of people who can't get better. And this is personal for every single one of us. You know, if it's not us, then it's people in our family and our loved ones and people in our workplaces who are sick. And everyone wants people to be able to lead a meaningful life. So our focus is wholly philanthropic. Uh, we don't have any profit motive at all, and we just want to make sure that these medicines become available and accessible to the largest number of people possible. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, um, the last thing that I want to ask is, you know, going to be a little bit unorthodox, but how would you feel about us uh, unmuting uh, some of the audience members and uh, turning off our cameras and trying to sing together? Yeah, that's always good. I don't know how that will, will work on Zoom, but... <laughs> Yeah, we can try it and just see. We can just hum a note and uh, see what happens. So let me... Um, yeah, we'll do a giant om. Okay, Why not a go. giant om? Okay. Mm -hmm. Here we go. these folks to talk. Give me a second. If you're, in, if you're in this call, we're asking you to participate, to hum with us, to om with us. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Now uh, there's Simeon who I spoke to today. Hi Simeon. Um, a couple more. All right, folks, there's a bunch of you that are now unmuted. So please feel free to uh, join us in this own, right? Okay, here we go. Thank you all. That was awesome. Um, Tanya, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for educating us. Um, really wonderful videos, really wonderful content. And thank you for uh, encouraging us to sing. Uh, we will continue this chat offline. And thank you. Psychedelics and singing, the wonder drugs of the future. Yeah, definitely. We'll chat with you soon. Thank Be you. Well. Thanks for having me. Take care.